numbers tell us though what does the PED value actually tell us we're not going to interpret the PED value the PED is the percentage change in quantity demanded resulting from a 1% change in the price that's what PED is so in the case of McDonald's hamburgers we can interpret this value here for every 1% increase in the price, the quantity demanded decreases by 1.21%. That's exactly what PED is. It's how much quantity demanded will fall for every 1% increase in price. And down here, the interpretation of our PED for gasoline is that for every 1% increase in price, quantity demanded decreases by 0.38%. That's what PED tells us. It's the percentage decrease in quantity resulting from every 1% increase in the price. So with that in mind, we can do some further interpretation of the possible outcomes of our PED calculation over here. Notice that I'm looking at the absolute value of PED when interpreting its value. So we're going to actually drop the negative sign when we interpret the value of PED because what we really care about is what the value tells us, what the number tells us. The negative sign tells us, in fact, we should put a note here, PED is always negative because there is a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. So that's a given. PED is always going to be negative. What we want to do is interpret the value. So to do that, we can drop the negative sign and say, well, what does the value tell us about the responsiveness of consumers to price changes? If it is zero, if it is between zero and one, if it is equal to one, greater than one, or theoretically it can actually be infinity. So what's a PED value of zero tell us? This tells us that there will be no change in quantity demanded when the price of a good increases or decreases because the outcome of our calculation will be zero. This is what we call perfectly inelastic demand. So there will be no change, no change in quantity demanded resulting from a change in price. Now, while this is theoretically possible, it actually defies the law of demand. We know that the law of demand says that as price increases, quantity demanded decreases. So it's a very rare circumstance that the demand for a good will be perfectly inelastic. What is more common, however, is what we call inelastic demand or relatively inelastic demand. If the value that we get is less than one but greater than zero, demand will be inelastic. This means that consumers are relatively unresponsive to price changes. Looking at our two goods, we can see that the demand for gasoline is relatively unresponsive to price changes. The value, the absolute value of the PED coefficient is between 0 and 1 at 0 0.38. This means that the percent change in QD is less than the percent change in price. Goods that have relatively inelastic demand are those that tend to have few substitutes and that consumers are not likely to consume a drastically reduced quantity of when the price rises or a drastically increased quantity of when the price falls. If the PED coefficient equals one, the result is what we call a unit elastic demand. In other words, the response of consumers to a price change is proportional to the change in price. In other words, percent change in QD is equal to the percent change in price. Let's move on to a PED coefficient of greater than one, such as that for our McDonald's Big Macs. This is a situation in which demand is elastic. In other words, consumers are relatively responsive to price changes. Goods that have lots of substitutes or goods that are not deemed to be necessities tend to have relatively elastic demand. In our next video, we'll go into some more details about the determinants of PED and come up with some common characteristics of goods that would have a PED value of greater or less than one. Now, theoretically, PED could be equal to infinity. This is what we call perfectly 
elastic demand. In other words, any change in price will lead to an infinite change in quantity demanded. If price falls, everyone will want to buy the good. If price rises, no one will want to buy the good. Again, this is pretty much a theoretical situation. There are some examples that I'll discuss in the next lesson of goods that might have perfectly elastic demand, but for the most part, the idea of perfectly elastic demand is one that informs our understanding of certain types of markets, whereas the existence of perfectly elastic goods tends to be more theoretical than realistic. So in this lesson, we've gone through the definition of PED. We've calculated PED using the simple formula for two goods, McDonald's Big Macs and gasoline. And through those calculations, we've determined that demand for McDonald's Big Macs is relatively elastic because the absolute value of the PED coefficient is greater than one. And demand for gasoline is relatively inelastic because the absolute value of the PED coefficient is less than one. We then went through and interpreted the possible values of the PED coefficient concluding that if PED equals zero, we have perfectly inelastic demand all the way to the extreme theoretical outcome of infinity, which represents perfectly elastic demand with different ranges of elasticity from inelastic to unilastic to elastic in between zero and infinity. In the next lesson, we'll outline some of the factors that can determine the price elasticity of demand for different goods. Mm -hmm.